Hey you, and welcome back to another video. Now, if you watched last week's video, you know that we're diving into the new features of Resolve 18.1, and this video is gonna cover another new feature that I wanted to take a look at, the Sky Replacement Tool. This is an OpenFX plugin that you can use straight from the color page, so there's no fusion work involved if you're a little bit scared to touch that portion of Resolve. This can be used straight from the color page. The settings and everything are pretty straightforward, so I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right, so just some disclaimers up front. This is a really cool tool that you can use but it's not a catch-all and it's not designed to fix everything so if you're expecting this sky replacement tool to just come up with like the most beautiful sunset skies and golden hour and give you all that kind of stuff it's not quite that for that type of work you're still gonna need VFX manual keying all that kind of stuff but if you're in a pinch and you need to replace your sky, or maybe you just wanna make the sky that you captured look a little bit better, add some clouds, add some detail, that kind of stuff, then this effect is gonna be really useful because you can do it really fast and just move on with your color grade after that. So let's say, for example, you captured an image or you're grading an image where the sky is just really flat. You have those days where you go out there and it's just white, bland, like no interesting looking clouds in the background, nothing. Well, this tool can help you fix that. If you could do me a huge favor though, right before we jump in, Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button on this video as well if you learned something. Uh, we're at 1,200 subscribers, which is crazy. And uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button, really helps me out a lot, helps me grow the channel as well. And don't forget too, if you're interested in these new features, then definitely hit the subscribe button because I have one other video coming out which is gonna be talking about the editing changes, some things that they added to 18.1 that makes editing really cool. And then we'll dive back into our regular like filmmaking content and all that stuff. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any videos. All right, let's jump in. All right. So so here we are in Resolve, and let's take a look at this effect right here that I pulled up already in our effects tab. If you don't have open effects open already, then just click this little effects button here in the top right, and you can do search. I just typed in sky and it popped up here, sky replacement. You can add this node here one of two ways. One is you can add it to an existing node, so just drag the effect over and it adds it to the node here and you have these options. The second way to add it, if I reset this, is just to drag the effect in just an open space here and it'll place what's known as an effects node. So here you can see here we have more options for inputs. Could be useful, especially if you're working with effects. So we just have to get this to link up with the tree. You can just take the effects node and do this until the line lights up yellow. And then when you drop it, it feeds the RGB output to the effects node and then out to the output. Now here on the right side, we get the same options that we just had a second ago when we added it to an existing node already. And as you can see here on the left, let's say I wanna do the sky replacement on this clip that I have here. Obviously nothing is happening even though we have our effects node already dropped into the node tree. Why is that? Well, we're gonna to have to define what is sky for the sky replacement tool. So that's why I have this node here, which is blank. I'm gonna take a look at it by doing it with the magic mask tool. I think that that's the easiest one for this clip. So just make sure that you're on object here, object mask, and then make sure that this dropper with the plus sign is selected here. I'm just gonna do shift H first so that it shows us what we're actually selecting with the magic mask. And then I'm just gonna do one swipe here, get out of this mode for a second another swipe here, and then one more over here. And then if I do shift H now, we have a really good selection here. I think that's pretty good. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see there's still a little bit sky left here at the bottom. You don't have to get it 100%, especially with this tool, because I'll show you there's a horizon blending mode here that we can do, which is actually really useful. So let's look at the options now for sky replacement. Now also another important thing is the mask doesn't carry over unless you drag the output of the mask here on the first node that we already did to the input of the sky replacement. And there you go, so the sky disappeared here in the back where we have this qualifier. Now, this isn't a video about how to pull master qualifiers. Obviously, I could spend some time and make this a lot better. That's not the point of this. I just wanna show you the effect. For now, in this tutorial, we have a good enough mass here that we can start using the effect. And in the end, I think we'll be able to blend it pretty well. If we take a look at our options here, let's just expand all of these and then take a look at our options here. So here at the top, we have sky mask adjustments. You can do, this is where you can affect the, the quality of the mask that you just pulled. You can refine it, um, play with the black level and the white level here, and then preview the mask. It shows you what it does to the actual mask as well, just highlighting the, the mask area. Underneath it is the source sky appearance. I'm not gonna use this one as much. This is just dealing with the source sky that you have in your image. Down here though, artificial sky, this is where it gets really good. So. Right now, the sky opacity is at zero, so you can't see anything. But if I pull this over to one, 
you can see the new sky fades in in the background. And you can see like the mask is imperfect, but it's already blending in pretty well. I don't think there's that many problem areas and we can kind of refine it here in a second. So one of the cool things that you can do with this is select your sky color and let me pull this over. You have the option to kind of choose whatever you know sky you want. You can make it less saturated. You can make it more saturated. Um, it, it's really up to you. But for now, let's just go with something like this. Now the horizon softness, you, you can also mess with the horizon here. That's how soft you want the transition to be. We can make ours pretty soft like this so that it just blends in. Obviously you can do more than that if you want, but I think that looks pretty good. You can also mess with the horizon height so you can bring it higher, you can bring it lower. In this case, it needs to blend in with this bottom piece right here. So having it just a little bit off be white, I think that's good enough. And you can also mess with the angle. So you can tilt it from side to side. And this makes more sense if you actually preview the artificial sky. So here it shows you what it's doing. If you shift the angle like this, it's just shifting the horizon from right to left. So let's click that off. I think the angle is pretty good for now right here. This is where it gets interesting. So now you have options for clouds. If you increase this, you'll see it starts bringing in some clouds in the background. These already look pretty good, but let's go through the options so that I can show you what else we can do with this. Now, cloud scale, pretty self-explanatory, but you can make the clouds smaller, appear higher up. You can make bigger clouds, kind of like this, if you just want one bigger looking cloud in the background. I'm gonna leave it something like this. Let's do, let's mess with shape. Actually, you know what? Let me decrease the scale here just so you can see what it's doing. But cloud shape, for example, you can have like this, or you can stretch them out and make them a little bit thinner as well. I kind of like the scale how it was before, sort of like this. Make it somewhat like this. All right, and then cloud tilt. This is really cool because you can make it seem like the clouds keep going back towards the horizon line here. And you can also affect the cloud detail. So you can have them be kind of more rough in shape or smooth them out and make them softer. I like it somewhere in the middle if it falls Somewhere like this, I think it looks good. Cloud fill, that's how many clouds you want in the background. You can kind of have it be more sparse or put more in. I think leaving it somewhere like that is good. Cloud contrast, once again, this is just more options for clouds here. Cloud time, now you can keyframe this as well. And if there's movement or if you want a little bit of movement in the background, you can do cloud time here. I'm just gonna reset it and not mess with that for now, but just know that it's an option here and you can just go ahead and keyframe it. This next set of options is also pretty cool. You can choose to have a hotspot. So if you wanna create like an artificial sun, you can also choose the color. The default is this kind of yellowish orange hotspot color, and you can go ahead and shift the position. So let's say I want the sun to be just kind of out of frame here, and there we go. So now we have a little artificial sun. I'm not gonna keep it on, but just know that the option's there. It kind of also provides like a little halo and stuff too, so pretty cool, the stuff that you can do with it, and obviously make it bigger, and also how sharp or diffuse you want the hotspot to be as well. So I'm just gonna reset that though. This section of the options is also pretty cool, sky position. So in case you have movement or let's say you need to track the foreground, that's an option here. You get multiple options so you can keyframe, which means just manually keyframing, track the foreground, track the original sky, or use the FX tracker. I'm not gonna do it for this one. I just wanna show you the effect in and of itself, but just know that that's available. And then what'll happen sometimes is if you track the foreground, it moves the artificial sky out of the way because it generates an image basically. And then it'll move to a point where let's say there'll be like a blank spot here where there's no more artificial sky if it tracks the motion. It has this option here, which you can do auto size for motion, and then it'll just fill in all the blank pixels. So that's a really cool option that you have as well when you're tracking your sky. All right, last little bit here, which are these options that you have sky integration. This is how you can get your sky to look even more realistic in the shot. You can preview the final sky here. This is what ours look like. And obviously our little windows over here. So you can kind of see these clouds right here. Now, the cool thing is you can also affect lens distortion, lens defocus and exposure. So for example, let's say here, you know, the buildings that here are out of focus in the background. You obviously don't want the sky to be super crisp because it doesn't match your background. So what you can do, for example, is defocus the sky a little bit. That way it sort of matches with the background image. So maybe that's a little bit too much. You can back off a little bit but the sky is defocused enough that it matches these buildings back here. Another cool thing if you preview the sky here is you can affect lens distortion. So if you know that there's distortion on the edge of your lens here that you're filming with and the sky should be a little bit more distorted, then what you can do 
is have your pin cushion and barrel distortion on your lens as well that you can affect here, which is really cool. So if we preview it here, you can see the lens distortion sort of moving the sky around. You can be subtle or you can be a little bit more bold with this depending on your lens choice and what kind of lens you're using. And then last but not least, you have your exposure option here. So for the fake sky, you can kind of bring it, you tone it down a little bit. You can bring it up a little bit if you want the sky to be brighter. And all in all, these options are just more or less for helping you blend in the artificial sky that you created. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave it for today. Now, it's obviously gonna take a little bit of playing around and adjusting the parameters, kind of finding what works for you and your images to make sure that you get a pleasing result out of it. But like you saw, the settings are pretty simple, pretty intuitive. You can kind of get in there and mess around with it and in five or 10 minutes have something that sort of matches your scene and you can blend in seamlessly. It's all about knowing what tools you have available and when to use the right one. And like I said, this tool definitely has its place. If you're in a pinch and you need a sky, this is the tool for you to use. Like I said, one more video coming out about editing changes in 18.1 and then that does it for the 18.1 updates. So make sure you're subscribed, like this video if you learned something or if you found it interesting, uh, you know, or if you're just cool and want to like the channel. Until next time though, go out there and create something. A lot of it did it.